So let's go ahead and create our muzzle flash. Let's start a new composition. I'm going to call this comp three frame flash and you'll see why in a minute. Set its duration to three frames. And what we're essentially going to do is create a very quick and rough little three frame slow motion muzzle flash. So start by creating a black solid as your background. And on top of that, you will build a white solid. Um, so to start off with, I'm going to grab the pen tool and I'm just going to start at the center point and I'm going to draw a kind of rough, I don't even know if there is such a thing as a muzzle flare shape, um, but something like that. <laughs> for want of a better way of describing it. So what we've built here is kind of the main part of the flare. This is the big kind of plume that shoots out the front of the gun. Um, what we want to do to this now is apply some blurs. We're going to start with a radial blur. And by default, the blur stems from the central point, And that's exactly what we want. What we do want to do though is change this from a spin to a zoom. Um, so you can see what it's doing if I turn the blur amount up. It's kind of creating this blast effect that the flare is kind of washing out this way uh, to the right hand side. Um, so let's leave that around 50 or 60. Um, I'm going to just disable the mask for now so I can see more clearly the edge. And I'm going to apply my good old obsolete fast blur. Turn that up till I get some nice soft edges around the rest of the shape. Maybe a bit softer, somewhere there. Then now to this shape, I'm going to apply Effect, Distort, Turbulent Displace. And this is where I start getting these nice random flamey kind of shapes. So you just want to scrub through this value for size until you start feeling something that you like. Uh, and this is really up to your own discretion. So, you know, every time I do this, I get a different result. So let's hope we get something good <laughs> while you're watching. Um, let's say something there. I'll probably turn the amount up a bit. Uh, maybe the size up to like 20. Uh, let's say that's not bad for a starting point. And then what you quickly want to do is open up the properties here for turbulent displace. And we're going to use a little expression um, just to randomize the kind of shape on every frame. So um, instead of using evolution, we actually use offset. I'm going to hold alt and click offset. Type wiggle bracket 25, which is 25 frames a second, which means it'll happen every frame. If you're working at 30 frames per second, then that value should be 30. I'll put a comma in. The next number we put in now is going to be the value. I'm going to say like 5,000 pixels. So just so that frame by frame, you know, this turbulence really moves around the place so that every frame should in theory kind of be different and random. Um, in fact, if I RAM preview this, you'll see the effect it's had you see there. So we kind of just get this random dancing on each frame. So that's great. Um, so that's going to just break up the shape of our flare on every frame so that we don't ever end up with a sh the same kind of flamey shape um, on any two frames. Then I'm going to come up here to my effect stack and just duplicate this turbulent displace again. And the second instance now I'm going to take the size down to a little bit smaller and this is just to give us even more detail in the flame. Uh, probably yeah, maybe somewhere there, uh, maybe turn the amount up a bit, maybe drop this even a little less. And of course, the second instance now also has inherited our expression from the first instance, which means it's also going to be random. Um, so I think I'll leave that value around 10 uh, for size. Let's say we were happy with that. Um, yeah, good to go. Probably our radial blur could be a little more extreme just to get a bit more of this kind of feathery blowout on the end. Um, so that's a pretty good solution for our main plume. Um, so before we go on to the secondary plumes that come out of, if you're doing an M4 muzzle flash, um, let's just go ahead and animate this plume. So the state we have at the moment here is probably the biggest part of the flash. Um, so this would be step two in a three frame animation. So let's just jog forward to frame two. I'm going to keyframe the mask at this point, mask path. Let's step back now to frame zero, make our mask visible again. 
And now I'm just going to double click this mask so I can resize it and reshape it. And I want to make it about half the size it is at its biggest point. Um, oh, I need the reference for the center of my frame. Let's just switch that on. There we go. So something like that. I'll probably compress it a little bit in the X and maybe stretch it a bit in the Y. Um, and if I step forward now with the keyboard, you can see we're already getting a bit of muzzle flash action happening there. There's the start of the muzzle flash. There it is at its biggest point. So let's step forward one more frame and finish it off. Um, and here at the end of its life, it would probably just move forward a little. And we want to close in the back of this mask and create kind of a fireball-y type shape um, as the flare is kind of dying off. I don't know, maybe something like that. And if I step through this now, you'll see the effect we're getting. So there you can, it feels like the flare kind of shot out the gun and it's ended in this little fireball. Perhaps the fireball could even be a bit more compressed. I don't know, something like that. You know, again, this is really up to your discretion. Um, but now we've got the animation on the main plume. So what I will do is I will take that main plume, let's just call it um, main, and then let's duplicate it. And this next instance of it I will call secondary. And let's just step forward to the middle part of our animation. And I'm going to access rotation for this layer. And I'm just going to rotate it up to sort of 45 degrees or even further. It's really up to you. And I'm going to scale it right down. And that's going to kind of give us our secondary little plumes that come out of the sort of bird cage of the flash hider, if that is the correct term. Um, and let's go ahead and duplicate that secondary again. And let's rotate that down to the bottom sort of there and I think this bottom one I'll also make a little bit smaller I'll scale it down even more and I'll probably even scale it and sort of crush it on the x-axis so you end up with something like that um, now if I go ahead and I step through this animation you'll see there's the start of our flare our muzzle flash coming out of the gun there it is at sort of full strength and there it is dying off so if I step through that a bit faster you start to feel the effect. Um, and again, now I think on this last frame, I'll just come to my secondary plumes. I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to reshape these a bit. I'm going to kind of flatten them out and get a bit more of this kind of half moon shape going on as if they are kind of like the last remnants of a fireball. I um, don't know if I'm really doing a good job here. You know, like I said, every time you build one of these flares, they end up being so random that you end up with a very different result each and every time. Um, so let's just see what this is giving us. Pretty cool. That'll probably work for our purposes. So now that you have your three frame flash, what you should do, because um, obviously if we take a look at our shooter in our master comp here, you know, at frame one or frame zero, you start to see a little bit of illumination happening on him. Frame two, even more. Three, four, five, six. By frame six, it's kind of gone. So the duration of that muzzle flash is about four or five frames. Um, so we've obviously built a very basic three frame flash. So let's take that and drop it into a new comp. And this new comp I will call five frame flash and I will make its duration five frames or perhaps even six uh, say okay and then <clears throat> let's just grab our three frame flash layer and time stretch it so let's time stretch it by 200 um, percent and now you'll see if we step through the five frame flash comp there's frame one frame two frame three four five Six, so six we don't want. Uh, let's kill that. We actually want it to be five frames. Um, so there you go. One, if I step through it quickly, you can start to see the effect you get. Um, and that's exactly what we want for our shooter comp. So let's go ahead and just apply some color and glows to this. I will put a adjustment layer 
above this, I'm just going to actually trim my comp down to be just the duration I want. Um, to the adjustment layer, I'm going to apply an effect toner. And again, all of this you can see in our other tutorials for muzzle flash creation. The highlights, I'm going to give that typical pale, fiery yellow, something like that. Uh, to the edges here, I'm going to give like a hot orange, hot reddish orange. It's probably a bit too red. Uh, something like that might work. Say OK. And then to this, I'm going to add a glow. So let's go here and search for glow. And instead of using the original A and B colors, I am going to use... Sorry, instead of using the original colors, I'm going to use A and B colors that I specify. And that A color will in fact be very similar to the pale yellow that I used. Probably a bit more saturated. And the B color is going to be a bit of a reddish orange. Somewhere around there. And now if I turn my glow radius up and I turn the threshold up, that's kind of what I want. I want something in that realm there. Maybe the radius can go up even more and the intensity can go up even more. Um, but again, you know, you can kind of play with how hot you want your flare to look. Um, but a flare like that would probably work very well for our purposes. So let's go back to our master comp. Go to frame one. And let's drop our five frame flash on top of our shooter. Let's set its transfer mode to screen or add whatever tickles your fancy. And let's set it to a 3D layer. Uh, it is at, the reason it disappeared is I think because it's being affected by the light. So let's go down to our material options and say, accept shadows off, accept lights off. And there it comes back. Um, so it is at zero in the Z depth, which is where our shooter is. So we just need to slide it forward in the X and slide it up in the Y. Um, and it should line up nicely with our shooter. So if I just make my work area a bit smaller and we RAM preview this. There you go. You've got a nice slow motion muzzle flash that lines up with the illumination on the live action footage. I'm going to just go ahead and probably slip that back a little so that it lines up better with a bird cage on his flash hider. Let's take another look. And looking at this, maybe the scale of the muzzle flash could be a bit bigger in relation to our shooter. Probably about there. And maybe I'll even come in here and crush the levels again and just crush these blacks so we get a slightly sharper looking flare. And uh, it's maybe a little saturated. Let's pull some of that color out of there. Pull the saturation down a touch. And RAM preview that. Great. So you'd obviously want to go and set up two of these muzzle flashes. The second one would line up with the second shot, which goes off around somewhere here in the three second mark. Um, so I'm not going to do that. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, in the meantime, go ahead and get hold of a 3D rifle shell model and um, some smoke footage and make sure you have a copy of Element 3D installed.